Okay, so, all right, so tell me something now. You're in the bush, you're going to get struck at by a puff adder. How quickly can a, a puff adder strike? Well, faster than you can move your hand or move your foot. Okay, what is body length? Well, it can. It, it might not strike its body length in every time, but it's got the capability of striking its body length. That's very but it's fast. fast. That's, That's very, it's fast. very fast. General, the general rule is, if you're within one body length of the snake, before right. you notice it, you stand dead still. Okay, so what about one kilometer <laughs> from the snake? No, no, then you're safe. Okay. On occasions, you might be required to remove a snake. Right. In this case, the safest way again is to not get within striking distance of the snake with parts of your body. Which is one body length away. Yeah. So you'll get a long stick, right. a rubbish bin, yeah. or a bucket. Right. Lay it down. Right. I can now safely remove him and release and him put in a safe it, and place. Put the lid back. Right, great. Okay, so we, we've been, we're talking about these hinged fangs that are huge and lie on the top of the mouth and then come out, unhinge themselves. So, would you mind giving us a clear indication of of those fangs? Would you mind showing me those fangs? I'm going to show it to you, but I would really, I honestly say that um, it looks easy. But practice with harmless snakes before you actually... No, no, I, no I don't think anybody that is not qualified should actually be running around opening the mouth of a... Yeah, what we'll do is we'll grab this male. Right. If I'm, if I'm to pin the snake, I first of all get him into a safe environment. Right. Where I can control him. I pin him behind the head. And grab it. Okay, now the, the snake can actually get injured here, so you've got to support its weight. Right. Okay, you fine. Yeah, close up here. Yeah, you fine there. And there's, let's just see his fang. This is, by the way, this is one time where a non-spitting snake can actually spit a person in the eye. Okay, because he, you can flick venom. If he venom. swings those fangs around, spraying venom, I can actually get it in my, yeah, just like it happened there. there. Yeah, I've got I it in my that. mouth. Uh, now, uh, the reason why I want to show you something here, so it's oh, actually safer to wear glasses. Right. There's actually two fangs here. Right. He's actually about to shed one fang. And I and see... If, if I could just get this fleshy, m this meaty flesh off the sheath, off his fang, you'll actually... Yeah, see, oh, there's his fang. Yeah, I see that. Jeez, that's there's quite a fang. big... That's a big fang. They massive fangs. Robert, can you just come grab his tail? It's about to fall off here. And just tuck it in underneath my arm again. Thank you. There's his fang. Yeah, don't we see that? So you that. can see how massive that is. Yeah, now that fang's big enough and strong enough to go through soft leather. Yeah, sure. All right, great. Yeah, he's... And he stabs with those fangs. Now, lots of people are bitten putting down a puff adder. Right. Remember I told you that it's like a loaded spring? Yeah. When you put a puff adder down, you actually... Throw, throw it. Just drop him so you're not hurting the snake. Right. But you don't Watch give him the that chance to actually Watch the venom on your hands. you got venom on your hands by your thumb. Okay. Okay, now this venom is actually potent. Right. If I was to wipe that into an open wound really? or into my eye, uh, it would be the same as if if, um, if he bit me or if a spitting cobra spat in my right. eye. A lot of people, they'll see a puff adder in the bush somewhere. And what they're going to do is they're going to pick up a, a rock or something like that and, and throw it at the puff adder to, to make it go away. And this is... I mean, first of all, from an ethical point of view, yeah. nobody, why would you do that to an animal? Why would you go and throw something at an animal? It, it will hurt the animal. If it hits the snake, right, it's going right. to hurt the animal. But, but really, what good are you doing? Are you doing any good at all by throwing a stone at a buffet? I would say no. Like you say, um, you could injure that animal. Would you throw it at the a The real reason you're throwing something at is because you don't know what you're doing. You well, have no idea what you're doing. Yeah, I would assume so. Okay, but it happens, Clyde. No, it's People do sad. that. They do that. Or they go and take a shotgun and shoot it because it's sitting in the middle of a field somewhere and it's in the environment. Yeah. If the snake poses a potential threat right. in a built-up area, um, sometimes the best thing to do is to remove it from that area. Okay. If it's out in the bush, there is no real reason to pick it up and move it. Move it, that's right. Leave it in its environment. The chances of it ever biting somebody is, is next to nothing. Right, right. And, and tell me something. Is there any justifiable reason that you can think of for destroying a snake? Well, again, um, you know, safety always has to be the first thing. 
if there's no safe way of, of, of controlling the snake and removing it, sometimes destroying the snake can be the only alternative. Okay, but so that, that really is not not, not a, a normal option. Well, can I just one of our slogans at Hanyani is "Don't kill snakes, learn about them." That's right. Anybody can be trained. Anybody can be can learn the skills of handling snakes. But again, don't just don't. <laughs> Don't put yourself at unnecessary yeah, risk. Right. If you know how to do it, do it. If you don't... Okay, so so, so a calculated risk is when the odds are in your favour. Yes, and of not getting bitten. <laughs> an unnecessary risk is when the odds are stacked in the snake's favour. Yeah. Absolutely.